Mario Maker, you can't have missed it, it's absolutely everywhere, it's absolutely amazing, everybody is talking about it, it's a critically acclaimed masterpiece and a perfect celebration to Mario's 30th anniversary, offering years of replay value for an infinitely growing community, sharing diverse and unique level design, and for the first time in a long time I actually got really excited about getting home to play it. In fact, the last time I remember feeling that way was when I picked up Super Mario Sunshine, I think, which seems like a small ice age ago now. I had just bought the Purple Case GameCube gem from town and I remember sitting impatiently at the bus stop while I flicked through the instruction manual for like the hundredth time, absorbing every image and every little bit of information. I was living with my grandparents at the time, they lived bloody miles away, so even though I had the day off, I still had a long journey to endure, both there and back. I remember the anticipation was half killing me. I think, I think that's the day the bus broke down actually, but that's not really important in the scientist. The point is, I just remember it took a really, really long time to get home and I was really super excited to play Sunshine and never, since then, have I really been bothered about rushing home to play something. In fact, you could say I've been almost complacent about new releases, often thinking, oh yeah, that looks cool, I'll play it tomorrow, or next week, or when I have the time. I'd grown up after all, and that Christmas Eve excitable butterfly feeling had gone. I was no longer fussed about getting games on release anymore. Don't get me wrong, there's been lots of games I've been really excited about, sure. But not in a sense where I really just desperately wanted to tear through everything and everyone like a demented beaver on steroids just to get home as soon as possible to play it. And I, I thought those days were over. Then just the other day when I picked up Mario Maker, which was initially out of stock at the place where I normally get my games, so I had to order it, and when it finally did come in, well, it didn't technically come in, I had been turned away twice due to postal delays. I knew it was going to be popular and... I didn't order it because me being me, and anyway, just the third time I went there, the guy behind the counter was kind enough to bring me a copy out the back. I think he took one from the premium Wii boxes, actually, and just gave that to me. I'm, I'm not really sure. He just said, the order still hasn't come in, but you can just have this one because you've been waiting ages. And I was like, thank you. And after that, by God, out of nowhere, that weird, excitable, butterfly Christmas Eve feeling hit me hard. And I wanted to do nothing more than jump in my car, push my foot on the floor, and get myself home. But... Alas, I was working for the rest of the day and that um, and that feeling which I thought that was just a product of my childhood nagged away at me. I felt like a kid at Christmas again, clock watching, getting ever more excited as the minutes passed and when I finally did get home, it didn't disappoint at all. It's just so good, so much fun, so intuitive and easy to use because you can simply make whatever course you want. You have complete creative freedom. Well, more or less. I am a tad disappointed there's no jungle level, desert level, slopes or poison mushrooms, but it's a tiny pond ripple in an otherwise vast, shining and conceptually beautiful ocean that is Mario Maker, and with checkpoints now available, it's only a matter of time before the rest follows. It's so just wonderful to play, so yeah, got it home, started getting to grips with it, and yeah, within no time at all I was putting together my fiendishly difficult level. Now, wherever I make creations in um, sandbox games for other people. I like to make them really, really tough and really challenging because I really want people to remember my creations. I want to make something that's going to leave uh, an experience with the player, so I try to make them really hard. They're not so hard where you just want to rage and quit, but hard enough so it's challenging and rewarding to complete. What I've done here is I've created a level that I believe is one of the hardest out there. Now, I've seen and played through some levels that are brutal, insanely difficult and punishing, but I think this one really takes a biscuit. And you've got to be super, super determined to do this. It requires perfect jumping and timing. It's not a really long level, it's about medium size, but it's long enough for you to get to the point where you get to the middle of the level and you know that feeling where, um, let's take Lost Levels as a prime example. You're playing through the game, it's super tough, and eventually you get to the point where you're running low on lives and you're in the middle of a level and you think it's yourself if I don't get through this I'm going to lose all my lives and go back either to the beginning of the level or worse the game and of course it's terrifying nerve-wracking it really makes you feel like well your palms start sweating you start getting anxious and you start thinking I don't want to die <laughs> these these days when you've got save points just about everywhere it alleviates a lot of that stress and strain on you so it becomes a lot easier to manage and as a result people are now like oh it's a boss Big deal, doesn't matter if I lose, because I can just do it again and again and again until I complete it, and I, I don't like that. 
I appreciate the challenge. I like the use of strategically placed save points or, or save points that are a fair distance apart. Obviously, I like save points. I do. It's impossible to complete a really huge game without them. You know, try completing Final Fantasy VII or Majora's Mask without one. You know, it would certainly be a challenge. Uh, maybe someone should do that. Uh, the point is, by having uh, strategically placed save points, it makes a lot. It makes it a lot more nerve-wracking and exciting knowing there's a lot on stake to lose and you know it could take you back significantly in the game so with this level I wanted to recreate that feeling of in intensity and anxiety and uh, you never quite feel safe in the level and you're on edge because any one thing can end it all and throw you right back to the start so it's important to know I didn't want to recreate levels in a, in a negative rage inducing I hate life kind of way but more in a determined sort of um, like like an, like an itch that needs scratching sort of thing, you know, a level that compels you to complete it by giving you a sense or, or feeling that actually it's quite easy when of course it's not at all. Okay, so this level hasn't been up very long, it's called Thumb Killer, because if you've played it as much as I have then your thumbs will be hanging from your hands and I've obviously played it a lot, especially as I've had to complete it to post it and even though I know the level inside out, I still found it really really tough and I must admit I was raging a little myself. I'm, you know, I, I'm going to show you a bit of it now just so you get an idea of, uh, of what it's like and, and kind of what you're, <laughs> what you're getting yourself in for um, if you do decide to take on the challenge. Okay, so Essentially, what you need to do is, um, oh, before I get onto that, just so you know, uh, the people who've played it already have all failed at the first part, with the exception of two. Only a few more than this have figured out how to get through the rest of the first section, leaving the majority of people to have fallen victim to the hole at the beginning. So, anyway, as I was saying, what you need to do is, um, so you see this block here, it's quite high up, it's not easy to reach, so you need to jump as high as Mario can jump, and almost as far as he can jump to touch it. And then you've got to ricochet yourself back onto the block next to it, which is hard enough without the hassle of this piranha plant shooting fireballs right in the direction you need to go in. Now, unfortunately, you can't get to the plant and you can't defeat him. Now, this block was originally just a normal block, but I placed a star here for nothing more than a twinge of my own epic heresy, as it does nothing more than give people a false sense of hope. There's next to no way of you getting the star, and if you do manage to grab it, you'll almost certainly plummet to your death. But if anyone can prove me wrong, I would love to see it. Anyway, so this beginning part is all about timing and precision-based platforming. So you need to leap off the block on the right, back over to the question mark block on the left, and then maneuver your way up, where there's another series of high jumps, so you can work your way up to the top, and that's where you can move over to this section here, or the second section, as I like to call it. This part is also very tricky, as you've obviously got to time it right, so you don't go too far and land onto this plant here. Now, I'm not going to show you the next bit, because I want you guys to work it out for yourselves, but you'll notice there's no visible island here, and it requires a move only achievable from one of the game's respective incarnations. You see, I don't make levels where I'm purposely trying to trick you in any way. I, you know, I like things to be clear and easy to see, so you have a very good idea about how you can progress. I know a lot of people like to hide those invisible blocks so you can, and, and that's the only way for you to progress, and, and that can be a complete nightmare because you have no idea where those blocks are, and so it's all about memory and trying it again and again and again, and unless you download the course and look at where they are, then you're not going to know. But, you know, generally, it's quite a frustrating way to present hard levels, and it's the sort of thing that would probably make you rage quit. Having said that, I'm going to contradict myself a little because I'm actually in the process of making a level that requires almost nothing but invisible block finding. However, that's the purpose of the level rather than a means to trick the player, if that makes sense. So it's okay, you can let me off the hook. Anyway, in this particular level, there are no invisible blocks. There's nothing hidden at all. Um, you just need to work out what to do and then have the skills to be able to do it. So I'm going to leave that part to you. I hope you guys are going to want to play this level. Um, I would love to see you guys play through it. So if you want to record and upload onto YouTube your attempts, I'll be very interested to see the thought process as someone tries to work their way through because it does require thinking and uh, and it's not necessarily completely straightforward. Um, it's just... Um, <laughs> it's just amusing to watch people rage. <laughs> um, at the moment, only two people have managed to complete this course, and there's uh, there's been about 500 attempts. It's not even a 1% pass rate, so it's really, really tough. Most of whom have not managed to, to get past the first section. If it's any consolation, the level does get a tiny bit easier as it goes on, but that is very little consolation. Um, anyway, so uh, not going to show you this bit, um, but moving on to the next bit, uh, this is really just a case of taking a moment to think about the situation, think about what you need to do in a logistical way so that you can progress. 
I don't give second chances. If you get the puzzle wrong, you'll have to start over. If you do it right, uh, then that'll take you to here. Now, I'm going to show you what to do here. Um, it's relatively easy. You just need to walk through this passageway, leap onto the wall, jump over the plant. It's pretty easy, to be honest. And all you've got to do here is twirl your way over them, which is easy if you know how, impossible if you don't. Many of you will also be aware this move is only possible in this incarnation of Mario and that certain moves and abilities are gained or lost depending on which version of Mario you play. So it's more than just an aesthetic change because when I switch over to Super Mario Brothers, it's now impossible to cross and he wouldn't be able to do the double jump off the block at the beginning either. So this level very much has to exist in this incarnation. Once here, you then maneuver your way up to the top where you complete another puzzle before finishing the level and that's it. Now. It would really mean a lot to me if you guys play through the level. I will give a shout out to anyone who manages to do it. That's about it really, that's all I wanted to go over. I, you know, I've rambled on quite a lot actually, so I'm really sorry about that. So yeah, please download this. Here's the download number for Thumb Killer. Check it out, see what you guys think.